All right, so next question is, uh, what's the deal with engines? So you and I wrote an RFC that we submitted a couple weeks ago to the RFC repo. And I guess at a high level, what is engines? So I actually worked on the engines feature in Rails. I gave my, one of my first Rails 3 talks that I gave was about the Rails engines feature. And the basic idea is just making it possible to slice off a piece of functionality from an app. And not just like a component, which is isolated, but maybe like a whole route and the components that are attached to it. Some Routes, templates. components, models, right. all these kinds of Basically things. Basically a slice of functionality. Templates, UI. Yeah, templates. And the idea is that you slice it off and you give it its own namespace. And that way, you can be sure that when you pull in a package that right. contains an engine, you can sort of mount it into your router and not have to worry about any kind of collisions or anything right. like that. So one thing that I've been asked a few times is, what's the difference between an engine and something just like an, an Ember CLI add-on? So I think the way you should think about Ember add-ons is that they're just, it's, it's just smash. a way of describing a package. Um, the normal way that people use add-ons today, yeah, just takes the thing merge the and file merges systems. it, merges the file systems into one place. But that's actually problematic if my app has a route called user and I'm using your authentication add-on and you also have a route called user. Like happens to be called user. Now yeah. mine's going to get clobbered by your add-on yep. yes. or I'll clobber you. So it's important. I, I think the key difference is just namespacing in general. Right. Like engines will be distributed as Ember add-ons, right. but they will uh, be automatically namespaced. And that way, when you mount something, you're not worried about. So the idea is I have an app, and let's say you've got an authentication add-on. Your authentication add-on may want to provide like a login screen, yeah. for example. Uh, but you don't want to clobber me, like again, if you have like a user model or anything like that. So I have to say, basically, in the same way that ES6 modules are isolated, and I have to import them and give them a name, yeah. I say, Take your auth add-on, uh, sorry, your auth engine, and mount it at slash auth. Yes. And that way, I get to decide where it lives. And even if we use the same names for things, obviously Ember is a very name uh, naming convention driven framework. Yep. This ensures that there's no collision. I think the idea is that you should be able to link freely between the engine and your application, right. um, and all that. Basically, get all the same benefits of uh, quick, easy navigation, how the web works, but without collisions. And also be able to easily override it. And of course, I think the part of the long-term plan for engines is to make it really easy to lazy load an engine. So maybe the, you have an admin engine and you want to lazy load it and not have right. to worry so about. So kind of creates a point where you can package up stuff and deliver it. It's a yeah. lazy it's a lazy thing. Yeah. So I think, so we talked about the distinction between add-ons and, and engines. And I think a lot of, a lot of engines will be these kind of X, like add-on functionality, things like auth, so on. Are there any other use cases for engines beyond just that? Uh, so I could easily imagine like the discourse project being packaged up as an engine, and you can basically mount the entire discourse anywhere inside of your application. Maybe you could even like uh, it, the way that Ember works is you could just take the discourse thing and mount it inside of an application route right. that provides your UI at Chrome and then puts so discourse. So if I want to add forms to my Ember app, I just mount discourse yeah. at slash forms, done. Yeah. I think another big use case is at, at just large companies. Like a lot of large companies are saying, you know, we want to use Ember for the entire front end. But in an Ember app, you click around, all the routing is in JavaScript, so it's super fast. And then you happen to click a link that takes you to a different app. And all of a sudden, boom, it's slow. You have to throw everything out of memory. You have to go download and fetch all these resources. Yeah. So it, it kind of ruins the experience. It's a lot like, uh, you know, Facebook recently broke out the Messenger app from their primary app on, on iOS and Android. And it's like every time I click a link to a message, it's like, whoop swap out the different apps. And I think that feeling is pretty jarring to a lot of people. They don't like it. So the question is, how do we have separate teams, sometimes separated like geographically, yeah. and we want to take their two apps and put them together and present them as a single app to our customers. But how do we do that without constantly breaking yeah, and I, stuff? I think for that, like the name, the namespacing and isolation and collision avoidance is right. super key, right? So that way, basically everyone, you know, they write tests as if they were just dealing with a single app. Maybe there's some smoke tests for the whole thing, but they, basically people are acting as if they were writing a single app, and then transparently you can mount them all together and get all the you know right. the, the benefits cool. of the performance of everything being connected. All right, awesome. Sounds good. I'm sold. I want to today.